From building up the foundation of the main building, to both terraforming and retexturing the first wall, we made quite a lot of progress on my megabase last episode. But there's obviously still lots left to do, so today we're going to be doing even more. Or at least that was the plan. See, I was about to start terraforming this wall here, but then my brain cell kicked in and I realized that as soon as I start taking it back a few blocks, I'll run into my storage room. So basically, before I can do any more work out here, I first have to go through the incredibly fun process of cleaning all this up. Even just thinking about it gives me chest pains. But if you've been following the series, you'll know that this isn't the only shocker monster I have. I also have one at my squid farm, my guardian farm, and my starter base. And since I'm cleaning up this one, I might as well do the other ones too. Alright, I've now boxed all the boxes into a bigger box, and turns out this mess is a lot worse than I thought it was. I was only expecting to have about 150 boxes or so, but after collecting them all, ended up being over 300. And that doesn't even include the 270 large chests I have up here. But before I can start cleaning this up, I first need a place to actually put it all. Ideally, I'd just shove it all in a closet and leave it as a problem for future me. But unfortunately, I don't have any closets built on this world, so I guess I'll just have to actually build a storage system. And since I created so much space for building last episode, the only smart thing to do would be to build it up here. But I'm not smart, so let's dig another hole. And there's another 40,000 blocks removed, bringing us to a total of about 1.4 million so far. I'm sure you noticed this during the time lapse, but while digging this out I found yet another mineshaft. And by found, of course I mean fell into a hole and almost died twice. But just a few minor injuries, I'll be fine. Whenever I find a mineshaft, I usually just ignore it, as most of the loot's only useful in the early game. But I don't think I've ever seen one suspended above lava like this, so this one was definitely worth checking out. But as cool as it is, this is where I'm building my storage room, so at least part of it needs to go. And now that that's removed, I can finally start building, starting off with the floor. Similar to the floor design I used last episode, I'm once again using a darker colored wood, in this case mangrove, to split the floor up into a bunch of these different smaller sections. And doing this not only makes it a little bit easier to build, as you only have to focus on one section at a time, but it also helps give the floor a little bit more structure. Actually, speaking of the floor designs I used last episode, there seems to be quite a few people that think these outer platforms look like crafting tables. So just so you can all sleep at night knowing my base isn't just a giant crafting grid, I went ahead and came up with a new design. Much better. Whenever I make floors like this, I usually stick to using two or three different types of wood, but for some reason when making this one, I ended up using five, seven if you include all the stripped variants. So in other words, there's a pretty good chance that this floor ends up looking terrible. But at the same time, the more blocks I use, the more I want to get my storage system finished, because say I need dark oak wood, I've got to go through all 300 of these boxes until I find it. There, now the floor is finished. Actually, no it's not, I missed a block. And now it's done. It's definitely an interesting design, but after looking at it for a while, I'm starting to fall for it. And speaking of falling... Anyway, I think I've spent enough time on the floor now, so let's move on to the walls. And in order to do that, I'm gonna need a lot of mangrove wood, but between this episode and the last, I think I've used just about all of it, so I guess I'm gonna have to head over to a forest. And since slime can spawn in mangrove forests, I think they should also be able to take me there too. Perfect. No, that's not the right biome. I probably should have expected that from you. But since I'm here, I guess it wouldn't hurt to restock on a few more types of wood, too.
Last episode, when 1.19 first came out, I mentioned that I really like this new biome. But between this episode and the last, I've now spent over 24 hours just mining down this labyrinth of a tree type, so I'm definitely starting to take that one back. And that's not even mentioning the certain lack of the color yellow. But anyway, I can now add another 13 boxes into my slightly less messy mess and then get back to building. A good portion of my storage room is going to be built out of mangrove, but just to give it some structure, I'm starting by building a few of these dark oak pillars. Alright, I have all eight of the pillars built, so now I can start working on something that's actually interesting. This is a fairly decent sized storage room, so as you can imagine, if I were to fill up the whole thing with just chests, it'd probably be just a few too many, and might even be harder to find items than it is now. So instead what I'm gonna do is just use the one wall for storing all the different items, then use the other three for stuff like bulk storage and shulker boxes. But one thing all eight of these sections have in common is the design going across the top, so let's start working on that. Also, if you still don't understand why I don't like slime anymore, well this pretty much sums it up. I haven't experimented much with which blocks work with mangrove and which ones don't, but one block I really like with it is dark oak, because I feel like they contrast each other really well. Based off how well manual sorting has been going so far, I'm sure you've guessed that this system's going to be automated. And the design I'm using has this row of redstone lamps above the chest that from what I understand, which isn't much, will light up to indicate which chest the items are being sorted into. Which is really nice to have, but it doesn't look that good, so I was going to get rid of them until I came up with this design. If you simply just place a few mangrove trapdoors in front of them, then rather than having a bunch of big square lights, you're left with these small circular ones, which almost look like something you'd see underneath an old movie theater sign or something. And if you wanted to try using it in one of your own builds, you could also experiment with switching out the light source into something like a sea lantern or a shroom light to change up the color a bit. To finish off this first section, I'm just adding an archway to the top so that there's not too many straight lines down here. It's also just a great place for some archery. That was really bad, unsubscribing would be understood. So now we just need to strip all the mangrove and then the first one's complete. But there's still seven more sections, so I should probably build up those ones too. There, now the top of the wall is finished. I forgot to mention this earlier, but obviously the storage room isn't going to be filling up this entire hole, so the reason it's so deep is I still have no idea what I want to do for this main floor, so I'm basically just leaving myself room to do pretty much anything. Anyway, I think I've done enough building for now, so I guess it's time I finally start doing some of the redstoning. But seeing how I have less than a stack of it, I can't imagine I'll be getting very far. So just as I expected, I was barely able to get anything done before running out of redstone. At least to my standards, which when it comes to redstone really isn't that high, this is a pretty complex build, so I think it goes without saying that I'm going to need a lot more. Not that redstone's ever that hard to get, but this time it's going to be really easy, because I actually already have about 5.5 stacks of the ore ready to be mined down. And since we're mining down all the redstone, I might as well do all the other ores too, which may seem like a pretty small task, but after mining out a hole of this size, let's just say it's definitely not. Well that took way longer than I thought it would, but with all the resources we got from it, I'd say it was definitely worth it. But before we go through all that, as I'm sure you noticed, there's still one ore I haven't mined yet. And there's even a pink sheep that spawned beside it, so I guess that means we're getting extra lucky. Never mind, it's dead. Anyway, let's mine these things down. This has to be one of the most satisfying things in the game. 
I now have all the ores mined, so that means from digging out my mega base, I got a total of over 40,000 copper, 13,000 lapis, 1,500 gold, 8,000 iron, 11,000 coal, 469 diamonds, along with a few ores that are more valuable as ores, and most importantly, 2,125 redstone, which should hopefully be enough to finish up my storage system. And done. I technically could start this system up right now and it should work fine, but just to make it a little bit more interesting, I first want to make a custom input system. Oh, so seeing how this thing has a bigger brain than I do, it should be pretty obvious that I didn't design it, so all the credit for this one goes to Redstone Wizard 1983 And if you want to see them explain to you why exactly I needed 12 cakes to build this, then the link to that video will be in the description. Anyway, to start off this input system, I'm using some more mangrove wood to create a bit of a frame around this section. This not only makes it look better, but it'll also help hide some of the redstone. And then I guess the next step is to add in a chest or two, so that there's actually a way to insert the items. And then we can just fill up the rest of these side sections with some stairs and whatnot. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now onto the middle, I'm using a mixture of dark oak and spruce wood, which like this honestly looks pretty terrible, but once you strip it, it creates this pretty cool design that to me almost looks like a barrel. But obviously none of this is going to help move the items, so now I need to do a little bit of redstoning. And by a bit of redstone, I mean basically nothing. It's literally just an observer clock that shoots all the items into a bubble column. And then from the top of the bubble column, we can use some compressed ice to help the items move faster. Or I guess it's called packed ice, actually. I always get slipped up when talking about ice. So basically what will happen is whenever I put items in, they'll kind of just slide back and forth before finally entering the system. It's completely unnecessary and will only make the items take even longer to sort, but I feel like it provides a nice visual to show when items are being put in. Just to finish it off, I'm going to add a few trapdoors onto the ice, and cover the whole thing in glass. I think this is all done now, so let's test it out by putting in some mangrove logs. So as you can see, all the items seem to be making it to the top no problem, and then of course sliding back and forth a bit, which looks pretty cool, before eventually making it into this hopper here. And then if we wait a few seconds, they should all get sorted into this chest. Here they come, and perfect. I'm also just realizing I never actually talked about the sorter at all. This system is known as an item categorizer, and most versions of this require you to fill every single slot of the chest with items. But that extra click when taking items out of a chest is way too much effort for me, so instead I went for this upgraded version where all you have to do is place whatever items you want to have sorted into these chests back here. And if you're wondering, yes, this is literally the only item I have set up to sort right now. So obviously filling all these chests with the right items would be pretty boring to watch, but I could at least show you what all the categories are going to be. First up, I have a row of chests for each type of wood. It's probably more storage than I'll ever need for just wood, but I kind of want to keep them all separated, so whatever. Next, we have terracotta and concrete and all the other color-changing blocks, along with prismarine. And then on this side, we have all the stone, deep slate, and blackstone variants, dirt and gravel, sand, the blocks from the nether and the end, plants, mob drops, random items, and ores. But as you may have noticed, there's still one category that's empty, so here I think I want to put all the blocks from the deep dark, such as the skulk sensor. But I haven't actually been there yet, so I think you know what that means slash give at s skull. Obviously joking, let's head over to an ancient city. This place is a lot bigger than I thought it'd be, and even just standing up here, I can already tell that this is going to be my new favorite structure. Assuming I don't die, that is. Anyway, there's only five blocks I need to get from here. Skulk, Skulk Sensors, Skulk Catalysts, Skulk Veins, and Skulk Shriekers. So that's all the blocks I need, but I also want to get Swift Sneak, so I might as well loot this place too. Oh, well, that didn't take very long. But there's lots of other good stuff you can get here, so I might as well keep going. There we go, I was starting to think I wasn't going to find any enchanted apples. I can't wait to put those in my ender chest and never think about them again. On top of the two apples, I also got a bunch of other pretty good loot, like four skeleton skulls and a bunch of swift sneak books. I was able to make it through the whole thing without spawning the warden, but obviously that's not very fun, so let's activate some shriekers. Here it comes, this has to be one of the coolest animations in the game, but at the same time I probably shouldn't stand here. I'm sure it'll be a lot less cool once it finds me, but from here it's definitely my new favorite mob. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but it looks like it's chasing a zombie at the moment, so at least for now I should be fine up here. Uh, yeah, I think it got it. Maybe I should move a bit further. I'm trying to distract it with arrows, but I'm pretty sure it's picked up on my scent, so I don't really think it cares that much. 
Yep, it definitely found me now, so uh, I guess it's time to go. Well, that was mildly terrifying. Back to the storage room. Despite the fact that it looks like I still have lots left to do, this main storage system is really the only part that will take a while, so I'm actually pretty close to being done. But before I start installing all the bulk storage, I first want to build a centerpiece in the middle. I was originally planning on building some kind of fish tank or bonsai tree, but after trying out a few designs, I ended up deciding on a globe. As I'm sure you figured out already, I'm currently building up the globe's stand. Even though the design ended up being really simple, at this scale it was actually pretty difficult to get this curved part to look right, especially because it's built on a diagonal. But this is the design I ended up with, so now I just need to add in the actual globe. For all the water, I'm using a mixture of blue concrete and blue wool. And then all the land will be made up of green concrete and lime terracotta. And there's our centerpiece complete. It's just a small little decoration, but it definitely makes this place look a lot better. And now that that's done, I can get to work on the bulk storage. Just like the last section I did, I'm once again starting off with a frame, but I feel like there might just be a little bit too much mangrove wood, so let's add in some dark oak. Yeah, that's a bit better. This wall could be split up into two different sections. This first half's gonna have about 10 large chests full of stone that I can easily pull out whenever I just need a few stacks of it. And then all the remaining stone will head over to this side where it'll be stored into shulker boxes. So just to help show which side is which, let's add some chests to this side and shulker boxes to the other. But obviously those are just for show, so let's start putting in the redstone. This storage silo is designed by Silent Whisper, and although it may look pretty complicated, really all it's doing is using a comparator to check whether or not the chest has items in it, and if it does, it will power the redstone lamp in front of it. So then as the chest slowly fill up, the lights will turn on with it. Three out of the four light displays are going to be used for that purpose, but this third one's going to be used a little bit differently. This barrel is where I'm going to be inputting all the boxes full of stone into the system, so to make these lights not completely useless, I think I want to make them just light up somehow every time I put a box in. And really all the redstone I should need for that is a simple observer chain. I also just switched out the barrel for hoppers, so that way you can just throw the items in, but as you can see, the lights are now working. And now that that's done, the bulk storage for stone is now complete. But that's just the first one, I also want one for cobblestone, deep slate, and cobble deep slate. I just did the math, and it turns out each one of these bulk storage units can hold 646,848 items. So if you times that number by 4, and then include all these chests as well, that means this storage room can hold just over 3.3 million items. So I think I should be good for a while then. But as you can see, there's still one section left, and this place still needs a roof, so why don't I just finish it off in a time lapse? And just like that, the storage room is complete. To help tie in the leaves that I used at the top of the wall, I decided to make the entire ceiling out of them, and I'm really glad I did this, because I feel like it adds a lot of life down here. As far as the block palette goes, there's nothing really too special going on, it's mostly just made out of dark oak and mangrove leaves. But I did finally get a chance to use composters in a build, which I've been meaning to do for a while, as they have a really nice texture on the bottom. Also, you may be wondering why the final room is completely empty. And that's because this room's going to be used to store all my empty shulker boxes, but as you know, they're currently all built into a giant shulker box up on the surface, so as I get those empty, I'll slowly fill this room up. But if you've been paying attention, you may have noticed one small problem about this room. There's not actually an exit. But that kind of sounds like a problem for future me, so for now I'll just do this. Even though my storage room is finished now, there's still lots of items that need transporting. But that's going to be a really long and boring process, so I'll just do that in between episodes. So that's going to be it for me today. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next episode.